Hello, my name is Tim Mitner. I'm going to show you how you can deploy Windows 7 using Microsoft Deployment Toolkit 2010 Beta 2. And we're going to set up uh, Windows 7 for deployment inside of our deployment workbench. So I've got a grouping here of applications, drivers, and operating systems all gathered in one location, as well as the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit installation files. So we're going to go ahead and kick off the installation for Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. It's a simple wizard installation. Go ahead and click through. We just have a few screens here. Accept the EULA, accept our default location, and go ahead and start the installation. So I'm going to copy a few files over. And very soon it will be complete and now we're finished. So go ahead and click on finish. And now we can go to start. And we're going to go to All Programs, go to Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, and go ahead and kick off the Deployment Workbench. Now the Deployment Workbench is used to set up the Light Touch environment. We've got the Information Center with uh, some basic getting started information. We have also have a Documentation node, a News node, and a Components node, which will show you the components that you need to have installed in order to install Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. So let's go ahead and start by creating a new deployment share. So I'm going to rename this deployment share to C colon backslash distribution. It's just an existing folder I have on my system. So I'll go ahead and choose that and click on next. I'm going to leave the default share name of distribution dollar. Leave the default descriptive name. And go ahead and leave these defaults in place as well. I get a summary screen can see some information here. Now, one of the items that we've added into Microsoft Deployment Toolkit 2010 Beta 2 is PowerShell support. So at any time, in any command you run in the workbench, we have a view script, which you can now see the commands that we run in the back end in PowerShell in order to perform the same action. So now that I have my deployment share, this is where I add in my applications, operating systems, my drivers, my OS packages, and finally my task sequence. So let's go ahead and import an operating system. Before we do that, let's go ahead and create a folder to put that operating system in. So I'm going to create a simple folder here called OS source files. And in there I'm going to put my source files for my Windows 7 deployment. Go ahead and click on finish. You can see the folder I've created. And now I'm going to go ahead and import that operating system. So I'm going to choose a full set of source files. Go ahead and browse to my source directory. So I'm going to choose my Windows 7 x64. And go ahead and move the files to make it go a little bit faster. I'm going to change the name of this. Since I know I'm deploying Windows 7 x64 Enterprise, I'm just going to put Enterprise at the end of the name. And click on Next. See the summary information. And I can click on Finish. Now you can see the operating system that I've imported into my OS Source Files folder. Next, I'm going to add an application. So the application I want to add is Office 2007 Enterprise Edition. So I'm going to choose an application with Source Files. Go ahead and type in some information about this application. I'm going to choose Microsoft Office and choose the version number 2007. Enter that in. And then find my source files. And again, I'm going to tell it to move the files to make it faster. Now the command line is simple for Office 2007. I just do setup.exe. Click on Next. See the summary screen and now I can click on Finish. So you can see that I've imported Office 2007 into my deployment workbench with the silent installation switch. Now I'm going to add some drivers. So I'm going to set this up for my particular model of the machine which is a Dell E6400 computer. And I've got all those drivers gathered together. So I'm going to choose that folder, click on OK, and go ahead and click on Next. 
and it's going to start the process of importing the drivers on my system. Now I've edited it out for time so that it doesn't take quite as long, but you can see as it's importing this in, and now they're all imported into the system. So now I click on finish, and if I click on out of box drivers, you can see all of the drivers that I've now imported for that particular model of computer. So now we're going to add some language packs. It's a common thing in the international organizations today. So I'm going to go ahead and add in two language packs. I'm going to add in language packs for German and for Spanish. Choose my folder that contains my language packs and have my installation process and now that is complete. So if I click on packages there, you can see that I have my uh, German language pack and my Spanish language pack. Now in packages as well, this is also where you would place all of the security fixes that come out from Microsoft every month. So now that I've got all that together, I need to tie that together with a task sequence. So let's go ahead and create a new task sequence. I'm going to call this Win Client one and give it a more descriptive name. I'm going to call this Windows 7 Enterprise X64. and click on next. I'm going to choose my standard client task sequence. Now I need to choose the operating system that I imported earlier. So I'll choose my Windows 7 Enterprise. I don't need to specify a product key since I'm choosing the Enterprise version. I've got some basic OS information I can set, full name, organization name. Now I need to set the local administrator password. Got my summary screen, and now my task sequence is created. Now if I go to the properties of that task sequence, I can click on the task sequences tab and see all of the steps that we perform when we do an installation of this operating system. So notice we've got items like inject drivers, and if we go under install, we can see the install operating system step. If I click on the OS info tab here, I can go ahead and edit the unintended XML file if I chose. I'm going to leave the defaults here and just click on OK. Now that I have this, I'm going to place this all on a USB drive. So I need to create new media. So I'm going to give it a path for my media. See USB media. But first I can see my selection profile here. I'm going to choose everything. And it's going to go ahead and create the folder structure for that media that I can then use. Now that I have that folder structure in place, I need to go ahead and update my media content, which will copy all of the files in place. So you can see that starting to happen now. We're copying our applications over. We're copying the operating systems over. We'll also copy over all of the drivers, as well as the task sequences and the language packs that we imported earlier. It will also create an ISO file, which we can then burn to a DVD and use that for installation if we wanted to. Let's go ahead and click on Finish. If I look at the content of that folder now, I've got a folder called USB Media, and in that a content. I can literally take the contents of this folder and drag and drop that over to a USB drive that has been formatted and marked active, and then I can boot off that USB drive and do the deployment, and we will cover that in another video. However, if I go ahead and look under my deploy folder, I can see all of the contents of my deployment share. So I see my applications, my operating systems that I imported. If I go under out-of-box drivers, you will see all the drivers that I imported. If I go under packages, you can see my language pack that I imported as well. So with that, I have a fully configured deployment environment that I can now take and copy to a USB drive and do my deployment of Windows 7.